Oh my goodness. I just heard the news that Dr. Iona Locke has passed on. She's gone home to be with the Lord. And if I thought for a second that she wasn't saved, I'd be upset. But because I know that she was a mighty woman of God, I say hallelujah. God has gained another good one. And one thing I like to tell people who are grieving is people don't die. We just go on to another dimension. And so if you're saved, you go to heaven. And if you're not saved, you fill in the rest. You fill in the blanks. Well, we know that Dr. Iona Locke was saved. She was born again. She was a mighty woman of God. The first time I heard her preach was back in the 1990s where she, I heard on the radio actually. And it was, uh, let's get it on. That was her first one. Let's get it on. And I was like, Whoo, who's this sassy preacher? And then when I finally saw her, I was like, wow, drop dead gorgeous, um, beautiful inside as well as outside, brilliant, knew the word of God, forwards, backwards, inside out, educated, uh, enunciated her words with perfection. And she was one of those preachers who, she was an educated preacher. So she was the type of preacher who, if you became distracted, you were going to miss a lot. She was like a teacher preacher. If you became distracted and started doing something else or your mind started to wander, it, it, it would pretty much be over unless you were in a situation where you could back the tape up and listen again. Brilliant woman. Um, she became prominent back in the 1990s when uh, there was Juanita Bynum with her No More, no More Sheets. There was uh, Wanda Davis Turner with her um, Sex Traps. Uh, and, um, all, you know, all the various bishops, Bishop Jakes, all those individuals, they all were out. Um, they had, the, it was during the time when every time you looked around, there was a big convention and these prep, uh Pastors and preachers and teachers and spiritual individuals, they were setting up these huge arenas and selling out. And um, she, she became prominent during that time. But what I loved about her was that she didn't um, have a shtick. You know how Juanita Bonham with the No More Sheets and that's what she was known for. She was known for No More Sheets and... Uh, then we had one, you know, as I said, we had Wanda Davis Turner. Her thing was the sex traps and they would preach different iterations of what it was what they were, that they were known for. But not, not so with, with Bishop Iona. Bishop Iona Locke was versatile. She could preach anybody under the table. She didn't allow herself to get stuck in a niche where she was only preaching on one particular type of thing or one. No, 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 no. She could preach it all. And she did it with finesse. She did it with beauty. She did it with grace. I used to wonder, why is this gorgeous woman who's tall and trim and not dead and just knock out, not drag out beautiful? Why is she unmarried? I don't know if she wanted to be unmarried or if she just never met the right one. But, I mean, she looked like a model. She was drop-dead gorgeous. She had it all. Just educated, spiritual. Just a true woman of God. And I'm not going to say that I'm sad because I know where she is. If I thought she were unsaved, I'd be upset. But because I know that that woman knew God. Oh, she knew and she loved him so much. You could see, you could sense it through her preaching. She loved him. He called her home. He had some work for her to do in heaven. She was still relatively young. She was in her early 70s. But you know, I've learned not to question God. He's sovereign. I've just learned not to question him. We've lost a giant. 
we have lost a biggie. And for those of you who are not that familiar with her, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gift you with a few of her sermons. I'm going to uh, look below and, and um, I'll, I'll have, I will have, you know, posted some of her sermons below, some of the links to, to her sermons rather. And um, God bless.